On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a guan. A blessed and wonderful Thursday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So, in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public, and also members of the diaspora. So, please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so we can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in a Jamaica. So right you now my peeps, yesterday evening's vlog I made mention of that viral video where inmates at the Ocho Rios police lockup was seen torturing another inmate basically accusing him of being a man who enjoys the pleasure of another man. The inmates were seen throwing hot water and that man they boiled the water in their cells and threw that hot water on the man burning him all over his body also melting plastic bottles and plastic bags and you know the little wax fat thing there when time it drip off at a melted bottle or plastic bag them have that a dripping on the man back and all over his body so of course police arrested and charged five men in connection with that viral video now yesterday evening january 25th that was yesterday wednesday there was a standoff between inmates and lawmen at the ocherius police lockup in saint Anne. the circumstances around what led to the standoff is unclear stated the police but of course we know otherwise so on tuesday five inmates of the ocherius police lockup was allegedly seen in a viral video assaulting another inmate and were arrested and charged that's what the police report is saying the men were charged with assault occasioning grievous bodily harm and unlawful wounding in relation to the incident which occurred on january 19th so inmates from that said police lockup the Ocherius police lockup sent out another viral video yes my peeps the inmates sent out another viral video if you wish to see that viral video go over my instagram page at on the spot news media 876 on instagram and view that video where you will see the inmates tying up their faces of course and releasing the names of the alleged officers that gave them the information that the man that was seen in that video being abused by the other inmates was around the type of man the man who enjoy pleasures from another man so that caused a riot basically at the Ocho Rios police lockup causing heavy military and police presence and also the assistance from the fire truck to be called in to that facility. Now the police are saying Inspector Robert Forbes of the Ocho Rios police station stated that sometime about 4 p.m. inmates began issuing threats to the police which led to a disturbance at the lockup. By 6.30 p.m. he declared that there was a major disturbance and it was quelled. He stated and I quote, what I can say is that things are now under control. He stated that the location was okay. By nightfall, a team from Indicom had arrived at the scene and there were unconfirmed reports that there may be other inmate transfers. So earlier in the day, it was chaotic 
and soldiers and fire unit were dispatched to the police location as curious and lookers milled outside of the police lockup gates. So the inmates removed from the Ocherius police station on Wednesday evening have been transferred to Portland according to on the spot news media sources. Senior Superintendent of Police Powell stated that the disturbance at the Ocherius police lockups was unrelated to the five inmates being charged Tuesday with assault occasioning grievous bodily harm and unlawful wounding in connection with the beating meted out to another inmate at that police lockup. Now Senior Superintendent of Police, Mr. Powell. We understand so now try to make the thing look good in the bad circumstances. But nobody try to mislead the public by saying that there was no relation to what happened previously to the present disturbance at the police lockup because we all know it is indeed related. And how we can prove that? Go and check out the video on On The Spot News Media 876 on Instagram. Yeah, man. But what is really appalling in you know, my peeps that after that first viral video, with the severe beating and burning and wounding of that other inmate. Inmates still had in their possession cell phones. So I'm wondering, wasn't there a search after that viral video? A thorough search of the cells in that police lockup to get all of those devices out of the cell block? Because just after during the riot, here comes another video from Prisoners, come on officers, on a need to take some level of responsibility for what took place at that police lockup. Somebody need to answer to why those inmates still had in their possession a cell phone. So that is basically stating clear that there was no cell search after that first viral video. So sources close to on the spot news media stated that the riot started when the police and other members of the security forces went in to carry out a search and that is when the inmates became boisterous and started to send threats to police officers. It is also said that one inmate was subdued in that altercation and was taken to the hospital, hence the intervention of Indicom. So come on police officers, on a need to do better than that. And members of John Public need for you to work and work the right way. Take all these cell phones, all these instruments and devices out of these cells. We have all seen and known for a fact that this definitely can be detrimental to members of Jan public as inmates stay same place behind bars and instigate the loss of life of persons out there in the public so we cannot afford for these inmates to be having cell phones on a willy-nilly type of basis where they can be making viral videos and sending it out into the public space so I am recommending that they develop a special arm of the Caribbean search center that goes into these police lockups and carry out real and thorough searches because they are trained searchers so they will know how to carry out these searches to find these instruments yeah man because not only cell phones you know but i'm pretty sure that knives and other implements that can be dangerous not just to other inmates but also to you the officers and most of the times you know are the man when i have nothing at all to do with the corruption get injured yeah man so anyway my peeps make we continue now my peeps over there in the kingston eastern police division just under two weeks ago, I covered a story of this young woman presently on your screen. She was identified as a nursing student, 31-year-old Kimberly Jones, but affectionately called in her area as Little Miss. 
She is off a Mitchell Street address in Kingston 16. Her life was taken in a hail of bullets, 18 wounds to the body as a matter of fact on January 11th by a common criminal over there in the Kingston Eastern Police Division. Now the police have charged a man in connection with that fatal knockings and clappings of the female nursing student along Mitchell Street in Kingston 16. He has since been identified as 21-year-old so-called contractor. I'm pretty sure he's not a building contractor, but a contract knockings and clappings. He has since been identified as Romario Walters, but popularly known in the criminal underworld as Antsman. Now, he was charged on a Tuesday for the loss of life of the 31-year-old nursing student, Kimberly Jones. He has been also charged with illegal possession of firearm and illegal possession of ammunition. His court date is yet to be set. Now, the police report suggests that on January 11th, about 7.15, Kimberly was walking along the roadway when she was pounced upon by Walters and another man who opened gunfire, hitting her multiple times. 18 can, may I tell you. That is what the criminal elements meted out to the young nursing student. She was taken to the hospital where she was pronounced you know what. So on Tuesday, January 17th, Walters who is of a Jake's Road address in East Kingston off Mountain View, that is in the Kingston 2 era, was arrested during a joint military police operation. He was subsequently charged on Tuesday, January 24th, following an interview in the presence of his attorney. So most definitely, Romario Antsman Walters will definitely be having his day in court and he will be facing the music. So I just hope that the officers involved who are investigating his matter put them case file together the right way so that your honor can do the honors of giving him 45 years or over. Yeah man, so anyway, make we continue. Now over there in the Kingston Western Police Division, a 14 year old boy of a central road address in Kingston 10 has been arrested and charged with unauthorized possession of ammunition and offensive weapon following an incident at the hospital in the carpet era on Tuesday. Of course, the hospital in the carpet era, we all know, is the Kingston Public Hospital. Now, reports from the Denham Town Police are that about 4.30 p.m., the teen was assisted to the hospital when his bag was taken from him. His bag was searched and two rounds of ammunition and four pairs of scissors was seized. A report was made to the Denham Town Police and the teen was arrested and subsequently charged following a question and answer session in the presence of his attorney. A court date is being finalized for that 14 year old. Now my peeps, when I see say, them look at you the more time when I see them in the streets you know, as some dangerous youth them you know. Now where him had do with two rounds and four scissors in a film bag. And what him really did a plan for do. But anyway on the spot news media will most definitely be keeping tabs on this one and update you as I get further information. Now the last thing that we are going to talk about is this cartoon here by Last May. So Ed Bartlett was instructed to erect a sign to welcome tourists to our shores because we have seen an increase of cruise ships appearing on our piers. And of course, the Prime Minister would have instructed Ed Bartlett to construct a billboard to welcome our tourist personnel to our shores. So the man that was paid to erect this sign took it up on himself to just work with the trend, the leading trending stories we are going in at the island right now, which is of course is currently displayed on that newspaper that is seen on the ground that says massive SSL fraud. So he took it up on himself 
to have that billboard saying Scamaica, no problem, Jamaica tourist board definitely approve. So to the cartoonists, well done because this is definitely a true depiction of what is presently taking place in Jamaica land we love or some would say used to love yeah man so anyway my peeps remember to like share subscribe to the channel stay tuned to on the spot news media as i continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscast on the spot news media yeah man